Hi guys, gonna make a rubber band powered car from a pop bottle, I think we could call this. This one actually had ginger beer in it, or ginger something or other. Um, so we're gonna make some holes in it for the axles to go through, cut a big area out the top so we can reach inside to connect up the rubber band to the back axle. Uh, going to use a hot glue gun, bottle tops and CDs. If you haven't got a hot glue gun then you can just as easily use sticky tape to hold the bottle caps onto the CDs. That one works fine, but because I usually use hot glue gun, I thought I would just demonstrate. So we'll do that in a minute. You will always find links in my video descriptions with additional help. But the main thing about CDs and bottle caps is the CDs have got circles on them, so you should be able to line up the bottle cap so it's in the middle. Doesn't have to be bottle cap like that. One of those will do. Off of there. These have the advantage if they've actually got a little dimple in the middle that shows you exactly where the middle is. Uh, these come off uh, fruit drink cartons. Same thing, they've got a little dimple in the middle to show you where the centre is. To make the holes, you could use a nail. I've got a tool called a braddle, which has got a nice point on it so you can poke a hole through. Or you can have a bit of wood with either a nail or a screw through it that we can heat up in a flame so it actually melts its way through. That gives you a nice hole when you melt a hole through. When you push a hole through, sometimes it splits and when you use an electric drill sometimes it splits. The other thing about the... Oh, hang on, that's my LiPo charger telling me it's charged. That's for another little project. Yeah, on these plastic bottles you will find there's a nice seam on both sides and a nice ridge round there so you can actually choose to make a hole right on the join there. I won't push this through but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that hole just there and then to keep your axles parallel you can measure along from there and if you have a felt tip pen if you measure along carefully Now, I happen to be measuring 22 centimetres here, but you can measure it to whatever you particularly want. But that is a convenient way of going straight along that line so that your wheels should, or your axles, should be parallel. So I'll be heating this up and push it straight through. A nail would be better than a screw, but I couldn't find any nails, funnily enough. So I'm going to heat that up, push it straight through right on that mark. And same there, in fact. I'll just put a mark there. So I can see where that seam is. So I'll go and do that. Not sure how well we'll see this. I've got my gas hob on. This doesn't actually need to get red hot, but I probably will get it red hot so we can actually see it. Obviously if it gets really hot it will eventually burn the wood. But on the positive side it's keeping your hands well away from the heat. You 
see this. I think we can. Right, we're not actually red hot yet. And we don't need to be. So we'll just see if we can push a hole through with it at that heat. So carefully line it up with your mark. Yeah, not quite hot enough yet. So we will go we'll go hotter. also needs some cold water to put it in when you've finished with it so it cools down and you don't leave it laying around when it's hot. It's getting a bit hotter this time. Right, should we see if that's hot enough now? So carefully line it up. And there we go. Turn that off and then I'll go and put that in cold water so we don't leave it laying around hot. Right. That'll do for now. So we've got some nice holes in there. barbecue skewers and they are a nice loose fit in those holes if they're tight it's no good at all your car won't go they've got to be a good loose fit right next thing we want a good sized hole in here now I'm going to use a sharp knife what I will do is I'll just draw a rough idea of what we want. Just to give me a guide. You can probably do this with scissors. If you're using a sharp knife, make sure your hand is well away from it and you're not actually cutting into the table. Knife's not as sharp as I thought it was. I think we'll be all right once we got in. Yes, we're in now. Right, 
and you're coming back the other side the temptation is to get your hand in the way so make sure your hands up there and you're cutting away from it because the other thing is if it slips out you might cut into your body if it flies right up Right, so we've got plenty of room in there, so we can reach in, yeah. you might find these are quite sharp edges, so be a bit careful, and they're not razor sharp, but they're still fairly sharp, so now hot glue gun time. Always run out of hot glue just when you want it so I'm going to get a couple of spare sticks before we get going. Right just had a bit of a diversion then a nice big bumblebee came into the conservatory so I had to go and catch it and put it outside again. Anyway so hot glue gun is on it's uh, leaking out. To save a bit of time I've already melted some holes through these. I could have just pushed them through with my nice sharp bravel like that. Don't push straight into your table or you'll be in trouble. Or some of these bottle tops are so soft that you can actually push one of these through it, if you can get it in there right, yeah. So it does depend a bit on what sort of bottle top you're using. Right, we'll leave that one as it is, as a demonstration that it works. And we'll glue one of these. So, using the actual circles already on there as a guide. You can either put hot glue around there and put it on or you can hold it in place and put some hot glue around the edges. Let that cool, then you can move your hand around to do the other side next. At the same time, just check it is lined up. The advantage of hot glue is you can reheat it and move it all around again if you want to get the alignment better. Let that cool down a little bit. So that's one side, and just for demonstration purposes, we'll stick one of these on the other side, which as you can see is much bigger, and I haven't made a hole in that yet, because we'll make the hole afterwards, just for variation. make you watch me do all of them. I'll do the others now and then we'll push the hole through and see how we get on. Oh, another way of doing it is to actually put this through first and then you can actually align it while it's still hot. So, either way I'll just do that, I'll just do that way, 
one on top, align it with the circles that are there. Make a hole in this one. Push that one through there. And then before we even glue it, get it aligned. Let's put a little bit of glue on there. So there's three or four different ways of doing it for you. This is the one that I didn't put the hole through the other side. So we can now try and align it. And then push the hole through. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's pretty straight too. So all sorts of choices. I'm not going to say which one I think is best because I use all those methods. Huh. Just realised there was two things on the table that I didn't explain. There's a jam jar that was for catching the bumblebee and letting it go again. And there's newspaper so that when the hot glue gun is dribbling, as it does, or certainly this one does, it's not going on my nice tablecloth. Time to put it together. So I've got bamboo canes or barbecue skewers. You will find if you look at them carefully some of them are quite curved and some of them are pretty straight and you want the straightest ones so that your wheels run true. That one's a bit curved. That one's a bit curved. That one's got a bit of hot glue on it. Don't know where that's come from. That looks pretty straight. So, you might want to consider some little spacers. These are cut from a drinking straw. These keep the wheels away from the bodywork. And depending on how much your wheels wobble, depends on how much they'll hit the bodywork, and that acts as a brake and slows it down. So I'll just use these, I don't know, they're about a quarter of an inch long now. So we'll start off with this one that's made from sticky tape. It's pretty straight. Spacer on.
I still need to make sure there's a little bit of play there anyway. That's still a bit too tight. Yeah, you want a little bit of sideways play. <laughs> that one's a bit out of line, isn't it? Never mind, we'll carry on with that. Back axle, you want to be a fairly good solid cane. Front one's not quite so important that it's solid, but the back one, you're going to be putting a rubber band around it. And it's going to try and bend it as it as it pulls tight. You also want these holes to be tight. Because they need to grip onto the axle well. If they don't grip on very well, you can always put hot glue on them if you've got a hot glue gun. If you haven't got hot glue gun, then sticky tape. It will work without these. This is just extra precaution to help them run. Okay, now one thing I forgot to mention is I've also melted a little hole through there and through there so we can push a short bit of one of these through there to hook the rubber band onto. bands. Right. Not sure how old these ones are. They're from Poundland. Oh, they're already joined together. Expect they'll break. Okay, how many rubber bands? You could use one and you can use a bit of cotton to get to the back axle. If you do that, then you really want to hot glue a little spike sticking up on there, like a T-shape. What I quite often use is the pointy bit off the end of one of these. And just glue it straight on there so it makes a T. And that makes it a lot easier to actually connect your rubber band on. The way I often do it is... Oh, let's demonstrate here. Wrap it round. And as you wind it round, it goes over itself, and that holds it in place. So that's what we're going to do here, but if you have trouble with that, then just cut the top off of one of them and glue it straight on there in a T-shape. Now, join in rubber bands together if you've never done it before. Push loop through and push the other end through that loop. Do that again. Through there. Push the other end through there. And you've done it. And you could, if you were connecting it onto that stick there, you could, if you wanted, go all the way around, push that through there, and that will connect it onto that stick there. But actually, we don't need to, because we can just pull that out, push that through, and then push that back through, so it's held in place. So over the back, and you're not going to see this because my hand's in the way now, over the back, 
wrap it round so it wraps itself and holds itself in place. If you're going over the top there, that's the right way and the car will go this way. If you go underneath, then the wheels will turn the opposite way and it will go backwards. Or you could say it's front wheel drive then if you turn the car around. If your wheels are not running freely like that, then you've got them too tight together. You haven't got a gap there and they're rubbing. Or your holes aren't big enough for the axles to go through. It should be as loose as this. Right, we'll have a go now. Right, let's have a go. This is very light, so you might get wheel spin. Well, that did all right. Did most of that freewheeling. We can go back the other way. I was just on the point of wheel spin there, I think. There's a few things we could do to prevent wheel spin. I'll talk about that in a minute. pretty straight. Okay, we'll talk about wheel spin. I'll wind it up a bit further so we definitely get wheel spin. Right, lots of power. Probably saw it spinning. Put a line on there. So, wheel spin is bad. You could add some weight, just put some weight in there and that will help it grip. I quite like cutting up balloons into thin strips and stretching them all the way around the outside of the wheel or even old rubber gloves because they're thicker rubber and they give you a nice tyre. But you can stretch some rubber bands around there. So. They don't stay on for very long. But to actually get you away from the starting line, that will do. <laughs> or at least that would, I mean I really overpowered it that time. I needed some of them on that side as well. I'll right, we'll put some on the other side.
think we're losing a bit of the uh, directional stability. In other words, it's swerving off because it's bouncing around on these rubber bands, which is why I prefer the rubber gloves technique. If you look in the video description, I've got a link that shows you how to do that. Summary time. What have we got? We've got a rubber band powered car made from a plastic pop bottle, four CDs, eight plastic bottle caps, two barbecue skewers, and a little bit of drinking straw there to act as spacers on all the sides. And cut a hole out the top of it so we can actually get in there. Rubber bands actually held in place with another little bit of barbecue skewer going through the front there. I demonstrated using hot glue to hold these bottle caps in place and on a previous video I showed you you could just use sticky tape. It does the same thing. We've also talked a little bit about wheel spin and my least favourite way of curing it by putting rubber bands round. It makes makes them bounce around because it's an uneven surface and these tend to come off as you're going along or drop inside and get caught up on your axle. So I don't like that way of doing it. A simple way is just put some weight in the bottom there. There's plenty of room there. Just put some weight in there, a couple of dead batteries or something or other and the extra weight will hold the back wheels on the ground or you can cut up a balloon into a strip and cut straight across the balloon into a cut it into strips and stretch them round the outside or I like to use old rubber gloves washing up gloves because they're a thicker rubber and they make really good tires and there will be links in the video description on how to do that I've got a rubber band power channel called put a rubber band on it I'll publish this video on that channel and I'll publish a shorter version on my main channel just so people can see it and if they want to see the full build then they can go to the other channel, the Put a Rubber Band on It channel. I forgot to mention in that summary I used this to melt holes through the plastic. So it's an old screw, an old nail would be better than a screw to be honest. Heated it up under a flame and then just allowed it to melt a hole through the plastic. Alternatively, something with a point on it, but you'll need to open the holes up a little bit and you could use an electric drill, but I like that. 